Welcome to the chapel here at the Synod Office of Lutheran Church Canada for our worship service on this day of July the 22nd, the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, we shall follow the order of responsive prayer two on page 285 of the Lutheran Service Book. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We read responsively Psalm 73, verses 23 to 28. Nevertheless, I am continually with you, you hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor, and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 13, verses 26 to 31. Then Paul said, Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him, nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled them by condemning him. 
And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 2 and 10 to 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the temp- tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the past number of years, there have been various claims made about Mary Magdalene that are without any biblical or historical basis whatsoever, and some, quite frankly, which are downright blasphemous. You know, the assertion that Jesus and Mary had romantic feelings for one another, that they had sexual relations, were married and had children, such as was stated in the movie The Da Vinci Code. During the Middle Ages in France, there even arose a cult of St. Mary Magdalene that was filled with many abuses and false teachings and practices. But in spite of this, however, our Lutheran Church still commemorates today, July the 22nd, as the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, the day on which, according to early church tradition, She died in the city of Ephesus. And just why do we do so? Well, when we limit ourselves to what the Gospel writers do tell us about Mary Magdalene, there emerges something that is of importance and significance for our faith and our life today. For as we shall see, Mary Magdalene is one of the great examples as what what to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus means and implies. Now the first time we read of Mary Magdalene is in the St. Luke's Gospel where he writes, Soon afterward, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna and many others, who provided for them out of their means. And there are a couple of things that we in particular should note here. 
First, just as Mary Magdalene was healed by Jesus when he cast seven demons out of her, and so became one of his followers. That very same thing, in effect, has also happened to you and to me. After all, we too, as the order of holy baptism puts it, are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. And the writer of Hebrews puts it like this. Since the children shared in flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Yes, what Jesus did for Mary Magdalene, he also does, he continues to do for you and for me healing our sin-sick souls, cleansing us from our sins, delivering us from the clutches of the evil one. And secondly, after Mary Magdalene is healed by Jesus, she then serves him and the other disciples, providing for them out of her own means. And in this regard, let me ask you, how is the good news that the kingdom of God that brings healing to people enslaved by sin and the devil going to be proclaimed to them. Quite simply, it is done by and through people like Mary Magdalene, people like you and like me who provide for ministers of the word out of their own means. And St. Paul puts it this way in Galatians, the one who has taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Now, the appointed gospel reading for today from John chapter 20 is the next time that we hear of Mary Magdalene. It is, of course, Easter Day, the day of the resurrection of our Lord, that most touching, familiar account of how Mary Magdalene, who stood there at the cross for those six long, agonizing hours, now goes to the tomb early on the first day of the week in order to anoint the dead body of Jesus. But when she sees that the stone has been rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, she hurries back to tell Peter and John that someone had stolen his body. She returns to the garden with them, and after they had left, she now stands alone outside the tomb weeping, bewildered, perplexed, confused. And when she turns around and sees the risen Lord standing there, she does not, however, realize that it is Jesus. Even when he says to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She does not recognize him. No, it is only when Jesus calls her by name, Mary, that her eyes are opened and that she then falls before him crying out, Rabboni, teacher. And in this touching account, we have a most beautiful illustration of our own faith and life as well. For like Mary Magdalene, we too stand, as it were, at the foot of the cross every time we are gathered together in the house of the Lord. For here the symbol of the cross looms large before us on the altar. Here we sing over and over again the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Then too, on every Lord's Day, every first day of the week, every little Easter Sunday, we also go in spirit with Mary Magdalene to the empty tomb of Jesus. And like Mary, even though we might see Jesus' very body and blood in the bread and the wine of the Holy Sacrament, even though we might hear his voice in the voice of the pastor who proclaims his word to us, for as Jesus himself has said, he who hears you, hears me. It is only as was the case with Mary Magdalene, when Jesus calls us by name, that our eyes are opened, our minds enlightened, our hearts are warmed and comforted. Yes, unto you, Mary, is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. He is the atoning sacrifice for your sins, Mary. I baptize you, Mary, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Take, eat, 
This is my body given for you, Mary. Take drink, this is my blood shed for you, Mary. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you, Mary, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And listen to how the prophet Isaiah puts it. This is what the Lord says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Or as Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now after Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord, she is commissioned by Jesus to be the first witness of his resurrection to others, as he tells her, Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And as our text then concludes, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. And in this, we are given another example from Mary Magdalene for our faith and life, namely to also be witnesses of the crucified and risen Lord Jesus to others. After all, this charge and task has been given not only to the disciples, not only to the apostles, not only to pastors. No, it is given to all whom Jesus has called by name at their baptism. A charge given to Mary Magdalene, to you, and to me. A task that St. Peter summarizes it in his first epistle. To proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that is why it is most fitting and proper that we commemorate today, July the 22nd, as the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. After all, there's something about Mary, something about Mary Magdalene that makes her such a great example for you and for me of what it means to follow Jesus and to be his disciples. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We begin our prayers with the Kyrie. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. 
Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, restored Mary Magdalene to health and called her to be the first witness of his resurrection. Heal us from all our infirmities and call us to know you in the power of your Son's unending life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, enlighten our minds and open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through your word we may, like Mary Magdalene, stand before the cross of your dear Son and at his empty tomb, and so see him with the eyes of faith, and hear him also calling us by name to be his witnesses to others, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.